Welcome to Key County Connects, a program where we connect you with some of the important issues in the county. I'm Enrique Serna. Thousands of military vets will be returning to Washington State over the next few years. They've served their country, yet many of them are having a tough time finding a job. In fact, the unemployment rate for veterans has often been in the double digits. But there is help for our returning warriors. The county is partnering with Joint Base Lewis McCord and employers in this area to help vets transition into the civilian workforce. We're talking today with Rich Garmon, King County Business Outreach Coordinator for the county. He's actually with the Veterans Program. And veteran Chris Johnson, who is also a Black Hawk Air Crew member for the Army National Guard. Gentlemen, welcome. Well, you're both veterans, right? You yes. served. Yes, I did. 27 years. 27 years. Right. Uh, and you served overseas as well. I did. I was deployed with the 81st Brigade as the uh, Ford Retention NCO for the National Guard uh, during that period of time and helped our members uh, stay in the military and get the benefits they deserved. But you were also in Iraq? Yes, I was in Iraq. Uh, I had responsibility for the entire uh, uh, theater from uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, and Djibouti. Wow, so, a lot. Yeah, it was a lot of travel, <laughs> yes. And Chris? I was uh, in Iraq 04, 05, and again 08, 09. And you were flying helicopters during that time? Tell me about that. Infantry for the first tour and then I was doing a uh, commo IT okay. IT logistics okay. printers computer networking that kind of stuff for the second one I've only been flying for a little over a year now well let's talk about uh, this effort to get veterans uh, into the workforce after they come back home how many veterans are we talking about in King County well as of February of uh, 2013 the the numbers listed were 127,000 veterans here in King County, and that number only continues to grow. As we're seeing the downsizing of uh, JBLM and the other installations around the Puget Sound region, uh, a large number of those individuals are staying here and, and coming to King County where the jobs are. Right. And of the 127,000, are we still looking at a large number of those or uh, sizable numbers from the Vietnam era? Yes, we are. There is still a, a large Vietnam era population here in the county, and that's one of the things that the county program, King County Veterans Program, does to serve those individuals who are needing services. And yet we're seeing a growing number of veterans now that are coming back, like Chris, mm -hmm. uh, that had served since 2001. Yes, we are. And that's where we began to really focus on the concept of helping them make that next transitional step, get them into employment opportunities. You know, I was really taken by the fact that uh, some of the research that I had, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics found that the overall unemployment rate for veterans has dropped a little bit, about 9% now. But overall, for veterans in that 18 to 24 range, 20, almost 22%, that's right. extremely high. It is. It is. And it's, uh, it's really one of the unfortunate things about our returning veterans not having uh, the, the access they've had, that they should have to get into employment, and that's why we exist, to try to help them make those connections. We'll talk about more of that. Uh, Chris, uh, talking about your particular situation after uh, you got out, I mean, as you were gonna get out, did you have concerns about being able to find a job? Well, you're still continuing to serve. Isn't I'm, I'm still continuing right. to serve. I, for me, I was, uh, I was getting close to finishing up my college uh, bachelor's degree and was having a really hard time getting Get, getting applications out, knowing where to go, where to turn to, and, and what to do. And Rich and the guys are, are really, they're really, really helpful. They're really knowledgeable, and they're really supportive in helping each person be able to identify what they need and get them in touch with the right people to get the job that works for you. Right, that's great. Let's talk about uh, specifically in King County. We have, a, you know, the county has a veterans program. Right. There was also tied to a levy in some of the work that's being done right. now. Right. It, it, give me the history of that a bit and how it's well, working today. Yeah, you know, we were blessed in 2005 when the county proposed the Health and Human Services Veterans Levy, and and that passed, and that began to allow us to expand our operations to begin to reach out to those returning veterans to do services, especially with our National Guard and Reserve populations. That was an expanded role that we took on. Well, then again, in 2011, the county overwhelmingly re, re initiated the levy, which 
I'm very grateful they did that because that helped me get where I am today with this, this job. Uh, but that allowed us to begin a pilot in which we were able to begin connecting veterans through some of my efforts, the work that our employment specialists were doing, to employers and, and to do a hands-on treatment of them, more focused on the employment than in the general services that we had always been providing. So this gave us the opportunity to make a, a more focused connection, give them a lab environment where they could actually come in, at, uh, kind of in a protected environment where vets can sit in the room and talk about the stories and get their stories out, but also know that they've got the help that they need to move forward, to do that job search, to tweak that resume, and maybe even to help them do a better interview. So we do all of those things, and, and the levy has provided that opportunity for us. Uh, it's just been, it's been fun to watch it grow. Chris, being a part of that, as you came into the program, how, how did it help you? What types of things were there for you that maybe you didn't have before? The support, knowing that it's really intimidating to try and be looking for a job, to be unemployed and looking for a job and know that you need one. There's so many, it feels like there's so many options out there, but you don't know how to get a hold of any of them. And just to know that there's somebody in your corner, that was, the, that was the biggest first step, was just know that it's not just me, that someone else cares and is trying to. And then the, for me, the access to res, having the, them be able to help tweak resumes. Mm. I, have, I have experience and I have training, but I don't necessarily know how to put that on paper tell so you, you that I have yourself, it right? yeah yeah and finally the interviewing they uh, we did several mock interviews and really helped me be able to do that sell myself and and be able to get in is, is it, it all work. why is it challenging for vets I guess when they come back about what Chris has just talked about and, and just trying to understand okay how do you apply for a job and all <laughs> of these things well, we're a very disciplined group of folks. We come from a very disciplined, focused environment. And uh, it can be everything from our basic training where we're taught not to look at the drill instructor in the <laughs> eye, you look over <laughs> the left shoulder, to reporting to the board for promotions and the very formalities that go with that. Couple that with the fact that we have our own language, all five branches. We all have our own different, unique languages as to how we talk about what we do and what our, our roles are, responsibilities are. And getting that information to an employer in English is some t a lot of times a challenge. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I have- There's a lot of abbreviations. Oh, there? acronyms are a yeah, part right. of what we yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, we could find an acronym for anything. Yeah. And they're so, all probably going, what is that? Yeah. Exactly. And so that's, that's one of the biggest things that uh, we've tried to make sure that they understand is to be able to convert it into English. But even more so is to convert the, what is it you really do? We can give it a title. We can make it sound like good English. But unless you can really explain it in terms the employer understands, in terms that they use, then it really doesn't mean anything to them. So helping them connect those dots to put that information into a usable format for them to put on an application or put into a resume is one of the most critical pieces for them. Is it tough kind of coming back and then, okay, you've got to be a little more, kind of less formal, more relaxed to go sell yourself in a way or, or knowing how to do that? Is that one of the challenges as well? Yes, that, that, that is. And being able to talk about yourself. I don't know why, but veterans, we normally have a problem talking about the things that we did. And not in any kind of, you know, bad sense, but just to say, like, you know, like we did these really impressive tasks. They don't feel impressive. They don't feel like much. So we kind of gloss over the really great selling points that we do have which makes, of course, trying to get a, a job very difficult. Not good about bragging about what you <laughs> have been able to do or explaining how that works, right? Chris's statements alone explain exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. He uses the word we. Yeah. He's, yeah. Very rarely do we use the word I did this because soldiers, Marines, all of us are unlikely to take credit for it as something we did ourselves versus we did it as a team. We were part of this organization. This is happening because our teamwork, our efforts, and our focus as a team made it happen. 
And that's a very difficult transition for and a lot of taking to make. the team from to I, mm -hmm. because you have to individually sell yourself. Well, uh, let's specifically talk about the Veterans Aerospace Manufacturing Employment Pilot Program, mm -hmm. um, which you know has given him his opportunity and others. Right. Uh, how how does how did that come about? Well, um, I got a phone call and said come join us, essentially what it was. I was working for the state at the time. But it came about because the levy had money available to do this pilot program and wanted to see if we could support the, the manufacturing and aviation industry here in the state of Washington, to, or, and specifically in King County, to, to connect our vets to and to improve both their employability and, and the industry's need for quality, competent workers. And it's been a great model for us to build on and develop an employment model to move forward with. And it's been very successful for us. So how does it work? I mean, a guy like Chris, what does he come to you or you, do you go find Chris? A little of both, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I, I do outreaches to the, the, uh, the, basic ins the, the bases and installations, and they find out about where we are and who we are. But then they come to us, and we put them through a process. Um, we want them to, to meet with our social workers and find out, are there some hidden barriers? Are there some issues that we can help you resolve to make you more employable? and get through that process. And then once we're done with that, then let's get them into the employment side of things. And let's start putting the specialists on, on their particular case and start looking at what can we do to improve employability? How can we assist? So Chris, tell me how you got connected with this. How, how did that all work out? I went to a uh, job fair here in Seattle and was put in touch with or met a individual from the Veteran Service Program knew that they found out that I was into aviation and sent me to see Rich for the AMP program just because I, cause I wanted to be in aviation because I wanted to get into aerospace. So. And at that time, kind of where were you at as far as finding a job? And I know you said you were still going to school. I was <laughs> hopelessly lost. Really? I, I, had, I, I went to the job fair um, I actually don't even know how I heard about it. I can't remember. But I, uh, I went to the job fair because I didn't even know it was available. I had recently, I only lived in Washington for about 10 months. I recently moved out here. I didn't even know what was available. I just knew I needed, I just needed a job. So and why were you lost? Just not knowing, being new to the area and just not, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able just to walk down to the local gas station and get a job and that wasn't going to be what I wanted to do and how, and where I wanted to go. But what but had I didn't you know done? Do. But, you know, but you'd served in infantry and then you'd have done other things. So what were your skills, I guess? I had six years as a Black Hawk mechanic. I had three years of college at Emory Riddle and a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge from from combining that and working, you know, on, on my own, working fix my own cars and my own motorcycles and doing things like that and trying to be able to put all that together. What what is I didn't even know where to start, what does that qualify me for? When if I go on a website and I've got all these lists, you know, there's always a prerequisites, what you have to have this. Well, I don't know what any of that is. I don't know what that means. And that's where So Chris has skills. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys have skills, right? But then they don't know how to translate. So That's then, how do you then take Chris and help him? Well, we sit down and we talk about what those skills are. We do some crosswalking with them. We utilize a variety of different tools. We've done um, World of Work assessments. We've done uh, ONET assessments, and we look at how do those skills that you got in the Army, how do they translate? And then we start talking about putting that into words that mean something on your employment piece. Uh, I mean, we've got a phenomenal group of employment social workers who do that work, and they do it every single day. I, I, I'm not the guy that does that every day. Fortunately, I've got great people, and they do great work. But uh, essentially, it is um, about uh, connecting the dots for them. So this, this means this in the civilian community. This is what that element works and how that works. And so putting that into resume format, putting that into application format for them is what helps make that connection for them. And then helping them learn talk, to talk about it. That's the next step is so that they can not only have it on a resume, but know what that resume means to them. 
What was it like, I guess, then going through this process and going through training to really understand that you did have skills, that you did have skills that were really employable skills? It was a little, uh, a little scary, a little intimidating. How so? Um, um. Trying to uh, trying to acknowledge that these skills are transferable. It, it it's the, the whole uh, trying to separate the I from the we. Mm. That's kind of you're used to being, you're used to doing things a certain way and having that that structure and trying to venture out away from that is a little intimidating. Um, mostly it was very, very rewarding, very satisfying to, you know, prior, prior to, to working with the program, I thought that I had these skills. I thought that I could do these things, but I didn't know. And after spending a couple months working with them, I said, no, I do know. I do have these skills and I can go do this stuff. So the training goes on for how long? It's, it varies by individual. Some individuals know th what we're trying to get them to go through in a short period of time. Others, it takes longer. Um, sometimes it's directed training. <laughs> sometimes we uh, have directed to- Directed training meaning? Well, I'm an, old <laughs> I'm an old E7 in the Army, and sometimes younger uh, NCOs uh, need a little focused uh, attention. And you know, Chris, you really can do this. Stop, stop goofing off. This is what you can do. And, and a little, you know, some, something that they're comfortable with and understand. Um, I certainly don't yell at anybody, but yeah. I, I do get them, uh, they get their attention. Yes, and, sir. And yeah. try to make sure that they understand that, yeah, you are capable of doing this. This is what you, you could do anything you set your mind to in the Army. There's no reason you can't do it here in the civilian community. It's just a different set of, of rules that you need to work under. Did you need a little nudging along the way or a little focusing along More than along a little. <laughs> More than a little. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you, how, how long were you in the training part of this before you were able to go out there and start hitting the pavement to find a job? Uh, we the, the, we kind of did it simultaneously, kind of did the training while we were doing while I was doing the job, the, as as different jobs became available and as the job search got refined, the training got refined, and we were kind of doing them both hand in hand. The whole process was start to finish was I think about five months. Mm -hmm. It took, I mean, it takes time to get a job, so. Right. And honestly, Chris had a, a very focused goal. He had one of the more challenging employers to try and get, a, get hired by. Okay, you are working at Boeing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So talk about that, the challenge and all of these things. <laughs> the, um, the, the whole process is very, Boeing, like the military, has its own language and has its own procedures and the own way, its own way that it wants things done. Trying to learn that and go through the process to be able to do that, that was several weeks of just trying to figure out what that was. And then you have to figure out how to adapt my skills and my language into theirs. And then the process, even when you get all that done, then you spend weeks waiting for feedback from applications and <laughs> it takes it takes a long time. How long okay. So how long did it take you to get hired? I put my first application in in January. Um, I put several applications in a month. Um, the job that I got, I applied for the end of April, and I actually started the middle of September. So it's a it it's was a, long a process. process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now you're doing what? I'm I'm, I'm a uh, I'm an apprentice in the Blue Streak, which basically we do all the one of a kind and custom work for uh, for the uh, for the fabrication side um, down in Auburn. And it's uh, I love it. I enjoy it. It was worth it was worth the wait and, and the struggle. These guys really made it possible and really uh, really helped me. I don't think I would be able to figure it all out on my own without having the uh, the outside set of eyes looking at this and the wonderful prodding. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be uh, tremendously satisfying to see them go through the process and then land a job. Absolutely. <laughs> we, do, we do celebrate a little bit when they all get hired, yeah. uh, or when they get hired. So it's, uh, 
it is satisfying. It, it uh, makes the work worthwhile, obviously. Uh, and the thing is, is they keep giving back too. Because Chris doesn't just stop, he got a job, he's not here anymore. He's sending people he knows to the program. And so it's, it continues to give back. Uh, you know, we're, that's kind of who we are as, as veterans. We, we work with each other. We're, we're willing to give a buddy a hand, find a way to get them up the next step. Uh, so it builds itself. How many veterans have gone through the program thus far? Well, I think we're a little over 200, and, right around 220 or so, uh, and we've been pretty successful with those that we've taken on hands-on within our, our pilot project. Um, so I think about 73% of those have gotten jobs and uh, done well. And the pay of the jobs? I, mean, have they been I think we're a little over $17 an hour on average, um, but that really is about a uh, $20,000 a year increase for some of our vets coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a pretty significant overall financial income increase for them. Uh, I think the figures that I've seen in some of our reports is the average increase is uh, a little over three and a half dollars per hour. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's significant. That, that really makes a difference in somebody's life. And who are the vets that are coming to you? I mean, across the... They're across the board. We've got, <laughs> we're working with World War II vets who are still looking for work, and we're working with 18-year-olds and everything in between, Cold War, Vietnam, Korea, uh, OIF, OEF. So uh, we don't turn any veteran away, uh, but we will work with them about their skill sets and their competencies. And you know, if aviation's the right area or manufacturing is the right area, absolutely, that's where we want to head them. But if it's security work or, or other managerial or construction work or, or maritime, well, we're certainly not going to get in the way. We're going to help them find a way to get there. But specifically in the aerospace area, have you find, found, uh, is it challenging in that, that area? It is. It is, because there are very specific requirements that the employers need to fulfill. And so matching skill sets is not always easy. Now, you've had a job fair recently. Yes. And you, that's <laughs> how you were able to connect with all of this. Right. Um, tell me about those job fairs and, and how do you get people to get there to them <laughs> and, and what's the outreach that happens there? Well, I'll, I'll use our last one as a best example. Um, and, and quite honestly, it's, it was a very satisfying job fair for us. The Washington State Convention Center actually approached us and asked us to partner with them on doing this event and gave us a beautiful venue, large facility, uh, which then gave us the ability to bring 141 exhibitors to the table, uh, over 120 employers, which then meant we needed to get veterans there. So that put me on the road a little bit. And we did some briefings up at Smoky Point with the Navy base and then down at JBLM and at the Wounded Warrior Battalion. And we were marketing everywhere we could. And we had partners who stepped up to do things like give us buses to bring them up. So day of the event, we get 400 veterans walk through the door looking for jobs. And we had been giving them information about what the employers were actually looking for. Uh, we've given them their websites, their top jobs, numbers of vacancies, so they could actually come in as applicants instead of coming in as just candidates looking for something. Um, and we're optimistic. Uh, we're hopeful that we're going to see a good number of those young men and women and their spouses, because that was a unique piece to this with spouses. Really? Yeah, get hired. We always like to invite spouses, but we really marketed to the spouses this time because it's a critical piece. Soldiers and sailors, we, we, we don't get to do this alone. <laughs> <You know? laughs> There's a, there, what we call in the Army a household six. <laughs> our wives are there. They're, in, they're on our, they're, they're our back. They're right behind us. I they're Chris nodding on this. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're taking care of the finances. They're taking care of the kids. And, and in many ways, when we're gone, they're doing it all. And, and they're always there wait, waiting for us to come home. Chris, significant other? You Girlfriend. Have one? Huh? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. She's also in the guard. Oh, yeah. So you, you both <laughs> know where you're coming from there. Yep. And, and, and had she has she had trouble finding a job or? She uh, she worked for Costco okay. in Minnesota, so she just did an interstore transfer when we moved out here. So she got 
she had the employment side covered. Um, to kind of put the pressure on me to... <laughs> <laughs> Was she nudging there in a way? A little bit, a little bit. But I, like I said, I noticed you nodding as he was talking about there. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's kind of a team effort there. Uh, it, it has to be. You can't, you can't do this alone. You have to have the other side. You have to have that support. And at the job fairs, um, are, 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 we talked a bit about aerospace and specifically the, the uh, pilot program that, that's training them. Um, but is this kind of across the board other job areas as well? Oh yeah, we had every every type of employer possible there, I think. We had law enforcement, we had city, county, and state agencies, federal uh, employment agencies as well. Um, healthcare was there, manufacturing obviously, aerospace obviously. I can't think of a, an area that we didn't have something covered. So it was open to, to bring um, all elements, not just the soldiers, but the spouses as well. Opportunities. Uh, Macy's was there in retail. Uh, oh boy, Alberto was there. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it was a, a lot of transportation companies. Um, and it was just really a, a great event for for folks to find whatever they were looking for. I, is it tough to get employers to come to these? Normally, I would say yes. Really? Um, in summer. Hiring is kind of not as good, it's a little slow. But on this event, when we said we wanted to bring the veterans and their spouses to the table, I put the word out and had 80 employers signed up within two weeks and, and started having to turn people away a week before our cutoff. So there was a, a very large interest amongst the employment industry out there of reaching out, touching, and talking with veterans. So I would say there, the, it's starting to change. At least I'm optimistic that it's starting to change. I've done other job fairs and they feel much slower. Uh, this was phenomenal. Chris, what do you uh, what do you want to do now? I mean, you got you got in. What are you What are you hoping the career takes you? I the apprenticeship is four years. We got about three and a half of it left, and I honestly I don't know. I w we'll see where the next three and a half years goes, and we'll see. Uh, maybe into management, maybe, uh, I don't know, I don't see, I don't know. I gotta get through the next three years. And <laughs> Once you got it, I, I, what was the feeling to get that job? Um, I don't have a good word for it. Um, I was incredibly ecstatic to get it. That was, especially that particular position, because that was the one that I really wanted. That was, this is kind of my dream position for for the stage I'm at right now. This, this is this is where I wanted to be, and I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm starting out in a really good place. So, what advice would you give other vets that are out there and now, kind of like maybe they were like you, kind of looking and trying to figure out what. The first step is call Rich, <laughs> 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 and and don't give up. Just just hang in there. It's you keep working at it. It will work, and that's you know get get the help. These guys are great. They're awesome, and they're really really great at c catering to your goals and your needs and your issues. You know, my hang up was was resume writing. Um, Yours may not be. It, it doesn't, you know, you might have an issue with something else. That's okay. They don't, doesn't matter. They'll, they'll give you the help that you need and they'll gloss over the parts that you don't need help with. And it really, it really, really helped having that individual. Did that they individual prep you response. and help you to understand also to how to do an interview? Um, I did three. I think mock interviews. They set up a video camera and oh, taped me. Oh, video and camera! <laughs> yeah, that was we, the we last the whole one we did, and I think that's the one that took. Yeah, that's <laughs> the one that finally uh, fi finally showed where the uh, where the flaws in the interview <laughs> were. Such as um, my uh, my personality. I was trying very hard to uh, to be a uh, a proper 
a proper interviewee. <laughs> sit very Instead of being fit, yourself? Yes, fit, sit very still and, and be very, very proper. But then there was a lot of things that were missing. It was coming across as a uh, cold canned. <laughs> so I imagine like it's like a, a breakdown session at the Seahawks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you, you, know, you kind of pull out the videotape exactly. and roll it back and right. say, okay, eye contact, handshake, they, these right. types of things. Really? Put, put the hands in your lap, don't wave them all over the table, you know, those types of things. Yeah, definitely are, are a part of that process, showing them what, what the interviewer is actually looking at when, when you're going through the interview. This is what they're seeing. Is that distracting to you? Is that going to put you off? I would say if your hands are flying around your hair and <laughs> all over here, then they're they're not. Or if they're not. Maybe. Or if they're not. Yeah. If you're just sitting there rigid, then they're they're not seeing what they're looking for. And so yeah, we definitely try and help them learn. Uh, you know, you can use your hands to gesture with. Put it back in a holster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, is there anything different with the vets that are returning now from serving in Iraq, Afghanistan versus the others and, and the other eras? Uh, you know, I think veterans across the board are um, pretty much the same. They all have the same kind of needs and wants. I think the younger generation that we're seeing now are um, a little more afraid of what the marketplace looks like out there because they're not quite sure what their skill sets are. Um, and they've heard how bad the economy is and they're, they're coming out of a very protected environment of being in the military for that f six or eight years or more. And what's, what's next? Where, where are we going? How are we going to get there? Who's going to help me? Uh, ACAP and, and TAP programs that the military provides to them. It's a great beginning for them, but when the gate closes behind them, who's there for them? And so that's, that's really what we're there to do, is to help those who live here in King County have that next step, that support. And we live in a world now that is constantly changing, maybe oh, yeah. even faster than ever before because oh, yeah. of social media and technology and all that. That, that brings in a whole different oh, yeah. thing. I mean, when I got out in 07, you could still go knock on a door, hand a resume, get an interview. Uh, seven years later, that's not the case. Uh, everything's online. Right. I'm, I don't know of an employer today, very few, who accept a resume at the front desk. They want it on, online. Was that intimidating for you, that part of it, the online part? And Actually, it was. I, uh, I like people. I would have been far better off walking into, uh, walking into an office and trying to talk to someone, trying to negotiate a website is uh, its harder than you think it should be in a lot of cases. They don't necessarily know what they're, what they're looking for. You know, we're back to, you know, like, do my skills, do I qualify for this job? If I can talk to you about what you're looking for, that's helpful when I just have to read it off, of, off a computer screen and need somebody to translate, <laughs> help you figure that out. You know, just trying to figure that out, period, sometimes, right. like filling out a form or whatever. What's your advice or what do you want to say to veterans out there that are, were like Chris, kind of trying to find out where they're going next? To reach out. I mean, that really is the bottom line, is reach out and ask for help. And that's a hard thing for veterans to do, is ask for help. But it really is what's necessary out there because there are a lot of great tools. And it's not just King County, but we have great tools. But uh, there's federal and state agencies as well that can help them. If they're not here in King County, reach out to the other agencies that are there. Um, and keep reaching out until you find somebody you can connect with, that you can work with. Um, because there are a lot of great jobs out there and there are a lot of great employers who really want to work with you and really want to hire you, but they just have to understand you. And you need help. You just need help for them to understand that. Yeah, you wouldn't have that opportunity where you are now if you hadn't have done what he just said. And reaching Not out, right? Close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not even close. There, I don't. Looking at how in depth the uh, the process was to try and get in, it, I don't think I could have done it without help. Well, a lot of success with this program and, and the efforts uh, in King County to help veterans and specifically uh, with the aerospace area and uh, trying to uh, connect folks 
as well across the board. So continued success with that. Thank and you. Uh, you know, to all those uh, returning vets, Chris and everybody else, thank you very much for your service. We really, really appreciate it. And gentlemen, this has been fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us for King County Connects. Please visit us online at kingcounty.gov slash KCTV. I'm Enrique Cerna. We'll see you next time.